sin. Testimony, the record of many of the saints that lived and died. And the one scripture says in the uh, 11th chapter, uh, 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 um, in, in from verses number, well, you can read from verse number one all the way to the end of the chapter, but particularly one verse that said many of them did not accept deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. They could have been delivered. Amen. They could have been saved. All they would have had to do was deny Christ, but they felt that it was more important to hold to their faith. Amen. Rather than live. And many of them, uh, children were killed. Husbands were killed. Uh, many of them, the parents, the children lost their parents. Those young people that held to their faith in Jesus Christ and lost their parents and would not recant, would not turn back, would not amen, forsake their God, amen, because they had such a relationship with God, they had such great faith, they had such confidence in him, amen, that they believed that the words of the apostle Paul when he uttered the sentiment by saying, amen, to live is Christ, but to die is gain, amen. Many of us should have that same attitude, though we're not in the era of persecution today, though we're not in the time where People are threatening our lives, even though Christianity is under attack, under attack by those that want to challenge, amen, our Judeo-Christian values, amen, through the gay rights movement and, amen, through the other secular progressive uh, agendas that those that have that question uh, Christianity and question the very foundation that this country was founded upon that has made this country great. And I'm here to tell you that this country is as great as it is or has been uh, great as it was only because of our devotion, amen, to the principles, amen, that were Judeo-Christian, amen, upholding the laws of the Ten Commandments and upholding, amen, uh, to their ability, the best of their ability, the uh, commandments that Jesus said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one toward another. One of y'all hear me this morning. Amen. Of course that, amen, it has given this country an identity that no other country has. Amen. Holding to the, the two oldest, amen, religions, the two most profound religions that there ever has been. Judaism, which primarily started through Abraham, and Christianity that started, amen, when Jesus Amen. Walk the earth. That's what this country is built upon. And that's why we can never support. Amen. The gun laws that they have out there. That's why we can never support. Amen. Uh, uh, ab abortion. That's why we can never support. Praise God. Uh, uh, homosexuality and so-called gay marriage and civil unions and all these things. These, amen, are things that have made this country great because, amen, the scripture says righteousness exalts a nation. Amen. But sin is a reproach to any people. One of y'all hear me. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Amen. As I close here in about 10 minutes. And so uh, look at our society and look how uh, morally bankrupt our society is. Seems like that everybody, amen, uh, many people that uh, are, are, are doing selfies and Amen. Sending pictures of themselves uh, exposed and exposing themselves on television, exposing themselves on Facebook and exposing themselves at every chance they seem to have amen, to expose themselves. That's not what Christianity is all about. Amen. That's not Judeo-Christian. Can we say amen? And I guarantee you that many of those people that involve themselves in that type of behavior, I dare to say great percentage of them will call themselves Christians. A lot of them will say that they love God. I don't know if you know about the, well, you probably do know about uh, this actress who married a seven-day Adventist pastor. Amen. I believe her name is uh, Megan Good. Is that who she is? Megan Good? Uh, who married this preacher. And uh, she has been catching criticisms ever since because she is still trying to hold on to that Hollywood standard and that Hollywood mode of living and praise God, and still try to be a pastor's wife. And she is always seemingly uh, on the internet, whether it is on the Huffington Post or different other uh, uh, online news uh, models to try to justify, 
amen, her behavior, saying that you can be sexy and still be a Christian, that you could be still sexy and love God, amen, and all these type of things. But what we have to understand that when we talk about being a Christian, the Christian, the term Christian means to be like Christ. Can the church say amen? Amen. The term Christian means to be owned by Christ, to be like Christ. And Jesus did not go out and promote sexuality. Amen. He went out and promoted the salvation of God. Amen. When you read in the scriptures, one of the first sermons he preached was repentance. Amen. That everybody needs to repent. And I think that's the message that people need to hear today. Amen. Not that your blessing is around the corner or amen. Not, not that you got a check coming in the mail. Amen. Or not that uh, 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 God's find God's match for you. Amen. Can we say amen? I'm not saying there's anything wrong with getting on the, the dating sites, but nine times out of ten, you're not going to get what you uh, think you're going to get. And you're not going to get what uh, they portray themselves to be because everybody usually puts their best foot forward. Amen. And then you really find out the real person. Amen. If you don't believe me, just ask anybody that's been married for a length of time. Can the church say amen? Hallelujah. Amen. It takes a little while for you to learn, amen, who you are really married to. Amen. I'm not trying to scare you off because uh, uh, we got some getting married. We're not trying to scare you off, but we're just saying, amen, uh, it takes time to really get to know a person. I wonder y'all hearing me. Amen. And many times that, amen, they're not as dashing and debonair, amen, as they first appear to be. Amen. She may not be as delicate and dainty, amen, as she first appeared to be. Amen. She might have come across to you with that nice, sweet, sounding, soft voice. Can the church say amen? Amen. But then when she wants something, when she got an attitude, amen, praise God, her voice has the ability to become deeper than yours. Amen. And her demand, uh, amen, that you give her what she wants. I wonder, God, I got any witnesses out there anywhere. Hallelujah. Can the, can the church say amen? Uh, amen. But it's all in good fun. I think it is. Uh, I've been married now going on 31 years. And amen, I advise anybody if they can get married to get married, just make sure you marry somebody that loves Jesus. Because uh, if you marry somebody that loves the Lord, you ain't got to worry about them out late at night. Can the church say amen? If you marry somebody that loves Jesus, you ain't got to worry about that old boyfriend, amen, that shows up, that's still buffed, amen, and your belly is sticking out like mine. You won't have nothing to worry about, amen, because if she loves God, amen, she can love you, amen. Can I get a witness in here? Hallelujah. And at the same time, if she don't love God, how in the world can she ever love you? Uh, amen. Can the church shout hallelujah? First girlfriend I had after I got saved uh, had killed two people. Amen. With her father and uh, amen, with her other sister. Uh, and I said, Lord, you got to help me to amen, choose the right person. I don't want to wind up dead. Uh, amen. Or wind up on somebody's plate or wind up in a refrigerator somewhere. You know, because there are people out there that do those type of things. Uh, amen. When I prayed and asked God, uh, amen, what should I do? Uh, amen. I couldn't look to my father because he had been married uh, six times. Uh, couldn't look to my mother because she had been married uh, five times. Uh, and both my sisters had been married and divorced uh, numbers of times. Uh, and I heard the Lord speak to me and say, just look for somebody uh, that'll love me. Uh, look for somebody that loves my word. Uh, yeah, because if they love me, huh, they will have the ability to love you the right way. Huh? Hey, but don't you know there's a right way to love somebody? Huh? Hey, man, I don't want y'all hearing me today. Oh, yes. Huh? There's a right way to love somebody. Huh? Hey, man, it's like the, uh, 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 the, the old song. Uh, hey, man, uh, the, the, the old words of the song. Uh, hey, man, if, love, if this love is wrong, uh, I don't want to be right. Huh? But you don't have to love the wrong way. Uh. Jesus can teach you how to love. Uh. Amen. The right way. Uh. And the church clap then and shout hallelujah. Uh. Problem that we have today. Uh. Amen. Is that folk don't really know what love really is. Uh. And you know why they really don't know what love really is? Uh. Amen. It's because God is love. Uh. And they don't know God. Uh. And the church shout hallelujah. Uh. Amen. The Bible said. Uh. That God is love. Huh? And it is impossible huh? for anybody to really know what love is. Huh? 
unless you love, unless you know God. Because God is love. And you can't possibly know God until you go down in his name and water baptism. Am I in the right church this afternoon? Hey, but you can't know God uh, unless you are filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, hey, but I'm not talking about that. Hey, but jumping over pew Holy Ghost or hey, but that non-feeling Holy Ghost. Uh, I'm talking about the kind uh, that talks in other tongues uh, in the church. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, that's the only Holy Ghost I know about. Uh, don't listen to them folk that tell you. Uh, Everybody don't speak in tongues. Huh? Well, if they want to say that, that's fine. Huh? Hey, because I heard Jesus say, uh, these signs shall follow them huh? that believe huh? in the church. Huh? Hallelujah. Huh? If they believe, they'll cast out devils. Huh? If they believe, uh, they will speak with new tongues. Huh? And I'm here to tell you as a witness, huh? when God fills you with the Holy Ghost, huh? you will huh? speak in other tongues. Huh? Because when God comes in, huh? he comes in shouting. Huh? He comes in dancing. Huh? He comes in shaking. Huh? And there's nothing in this world huh? that can compare to being filled with the Holy Ghost. Huh? Hey, I wish I was in the right church. Huh? Hey, man, I wish I had some witnesses in here. Hallelujah. Huh? Let the church shout hallelujah. Huh? Hey, man, a whole lot of young men out there. Huh? Telling the young lady they love him, uh, but they're going from one woman to another. Uh, oh, brother, you don't love them. Uh, you don't know what love is, because uh, you don't know who Jesus is. Uh, amen. A whole lot of young ladies uh, out there saying they love. Uh, amen. This person love that person. Uh, you don't really know what love is uh, until you know who Jesus is. Uh, you can't even love your children. Uh, amen. The way they ought to be loved. Uh, Unless you know Jesus. Uh, uh, amen. Because Jesus, uh, God, uh, is love. Uh, and once you come into the church, uh, uh, God will teach you how to love somebody. Uh, teach you how to love your children. Uh, uh, teach you how to love your wife. Uh, uh, teach you how to love your husband. Uh, uh, teach you to love everybody. Uh, uh, and the church, uh, hallelujah. Uh, and that's one of the things. Uh, uh, about Christianity. Uh, uh, that's one of the things uh, uh, about being saved. Uh, uh, the love of God uh, uh, shed abroad in your heart uh, uh, by the Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, can I get a witness in here? Uh, uh, the kind of love uh, uh, that'll love your enemies. Uh, uh, the kind of love uh, uh, even that no matter what uh, uh, somebody do to you, uh, uh, You'll still treat them right. Uh, uh, you won't do a payback. Uh, uh, you won't do a payback. Uh, uh, you'll love them uh, uh, in spite of. Uh, uh, why is that? Uh, uh, because that's God. Uh, uh, he loved us uh, uh, in spite of ourselves. Uh, uh, when we were out there uh, uh, doing drugs, uh, uh, out there prostituting. Uh, uh, they're pimping uh, uh, out there getting high uh, uh, out there drinking uh, uh, God said uh, uh, I still love you uh, I want to save you uh, I want to rescue you uh, I want to bring in the church uh, uh, brought us in uh, uh, cleaned us up uh, uh, washed us uh, uh, filled us uh, uh, what a wonderful change uh, uh, in my life been run uh, since Jesus uh, since Jesus uh, came in my heart uh, come on clap your hands uh, and shout hallelujah uh, come on and say hallelujah uh, and that's what brought us uh, uh, amen to God uh, uh, it was our faith in him uh, uh, amen it takes faith to get saved uh, uh, it takes faith to stand up uh, uh, and make that initial step. Uh, uh, don't let nobody tell you uh, uh, what being saved is all about. Uh, uh, if they have not experienced it uh, uh, for themselves uh, uh, in the church, uh, hallelujah. Uh, you don't want to listen to uh, uh, a bum on the street uh, uh, to tell you how to make money. Uh, uh, 
while you're sleeping on the corner. Can I get a witness in here? You want to listen to somebody that has a track record of success and the church, hallelujah. And I'm here to tell you, as I wind down, the one that has the greatest track record is nobody but Jesus, who is the eternal God. Come on and say, yeah. I'm here to tell you, there's only one God, and his name is Jesus. Come on and say, yeah. That's what I learned in walking with him. There ain't no other God but Jesus. Somebody said, well, how can Jesus be God? The Bible says he's the son. He's that too. Come on and say, yeah. Somebody else said, well, he said he's Emmanuel. He's that also. And I got news for you. Not only is he the father and the son and the Holy Ghost, he's also a doctor in your sick room. He's also a lawyer in the courtroom. He's everything. The Bible said he is king of kings, lord of laws, friend that sticks closer than any brother. He'll be there for you. He'll never forsake you. And I stopped by to tell somebody with a God like that, you can have confidence in her. And a God like that, uh, you can put your faith in. Uh, what is your problem? Uh, is your life uh, all messed up? Uh, I know somebody uh, that can fix your life. Uh, I know somebody uh, that can straighten you out. Uh, I know. Uh, I know somebody. Uh, he has a track record. Uh, I'm never losing. Uh, He's able uh, to do anything. Uh, no problem. Uh, it's too big. Uh, and God can't solve it. Uh, he's everything uh, that you will ever need. Uh, you don't need that man uh, if you got Jesus. Uh, you don't need that woman uh, if you got Jesus. Uh, put on your wine bottle. Uh, and grab Jesus. Uh, come on and say yeah. Put down your drugs. Uh, give him your heart. Uh, give him your life. Uh, he'll make a difference. Uh, he's sweet. Uh, he's sweet. I know. Uh, storm clouds may rise. Uh, storm winds may blow. Uh, but I'll tell the world. Uh, wherever I go. Uh, I found a savior. He's sweet, I know. His name is Jesus. Happy to say, yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, yes. If you put your faith in him today, he can save you today. Somebody said nobody can change that fast. Jesus can change it. Amen. One second you'll be a sinner, next second you'll be saved. Amen. He has just that much power. It don't matter what you have done in your life. God is able to forgive you and to wash all of your sins away. No matter what they are. No matter what they are. I was working with a young lady to receive the Holy Ghost years ago. And she had a difficult time because she said her sins were so great that she did not believe that God would forgive her for the things that she'd done. So I took her to the book of Acts and read to her testimony of the Apostle Paul. 
or whom God saved. He became the greatest apostle out of all of the apostles. Wrote the majority of the New Testament that we read from. And I said, Paul killed people. Have you ever killed anybody? He said, no. I said, Paul put people in prison. Lied on them, they went to prison. Have you ever done that? Anybody said no. I said, Paul consented to the execution of Stephen. I said, have you ever consented anybody dying and they died? They said no. I said, furthermore, he did these things against saints before he got into church. I said, have you ever done anything like that? He said no. A short time later, God filled us with the Holy Ghost. He said in Isaiah, though your sins be as scarlet, I'll make them white as snow. Have you ever had something that, a garment that had a stain on it that it just looked like it was not going to come clean? They say wine on a white garment is hard to get out. If you're able to get it out. There are some stains and garments, bleach, can't even get it out. Can we say amen? <laughs> Y'all know anything about that? <laughs> so you wind up just dying the whole garment. Those of y'all that do that, but we don't do that anymore today. <laughs> but anyway, God is saying, though your sins be as scarlet. Scarlet is the darkest, deepest red that you could ever get. He said, I will make them white as snow. Though they be red like crimson. He said, I'll make them as wool. All you have to do is believe. Believe what this says. You may not know everything about it, but just believe what it says and put your confidence and trust in it and watch God work in your behalf. Even after you get saved, we have to learn to do that. And we learn it on, thank you, higher levels as we grow in Christ. Higher, because once you get saved, and after you've been saved for a while, you're at a higher level in Christ than you were when you first got saved. Did you know that? Because of your experiences now that you have with God that you didn't have before. Things that you know about God that you didn't know about before. The voice of God, even being able to recognize the voice of God, to recognize when God is talking to you. People like to think that they know when God is talking to them, but most people don't know when God is talking to them. They think it's their own thoughts or they think it's the devil. <laughs> oh, they gave me back too much change. Thought coming to your mind, you got to take that back. In the name of Jesus, loose here, Satan. Lord, no, I need this extra $10. <laughs> Any of that ever happened to y'all? You back too much change and thoughts start going around in your head. You say amen? <laughs> I, I um, bought, this is years ago, bought $10 worth of gas. I think gas was like 89 cents a gallon. Gave the woman a 20. She gave me back four fives. <laughs> and I turned around and walked away. I said, I can't do this. I can't do this as I was walking to the car. I can't do this. I can't do it. And got in the car, closed the door. I said, I got to take this money back. As soon as I said, man, I got to take this money back, I heard a voice say, come on, man. The Lord has blessed you. He know all the sacrifices you make it. You know, what's wrong with you? Put the car in gear and leave. And give God the praise. <laughs> yeah. Who was that? <laughs> the devil told me to praise the Lord. The devil said everything. <laughs> I said, no, I can't do that. I got out of my car after I stomped my feet and slammed the door because I had to take the money back. I went and they gave it to him. I said, you gave me $10 too much. He said, oh, thank you for your honesty. 
Now, if they short us, can we say amen? Hold on now. Wait a minute. I gave you. <laughs> kind of quiet in here. I, I, ho I hope what happened to y'all, y'all took the money back. Next week, my mother got up and testified. I think the Lord, I bought this dress, and the woman gave me back too much, too much change. I said, hallelujah. They say it's clapped. Hey, hey, man. And I was sitting out there like. <laughs> the Lord knew I needed it. Hallelujah. She didn't even say hallelujah. She said hallelujah. Say, so say, amen. I looked around and said, what, Lord Jesus? Try to be like that sometimes. But when you know God, it's a big change comes in your life. Can we say amen? Some of us used to be so mean. Some of us hated white folk, hated them. Some of us hated black folk. Some of us was black and hated black folk. Can you say amen? I know a Mexican right now. He said he can't stand Mexicans. That's why he said he married a white woman. Because he said, I said, ain't you Mexican? He said, that's not the point. You know, sometimes, sometimes folk just make you go. You can't figure it out. You just might as well, as they used to say in my day, I don't know if they say this anymore, you might as well push on. They still say that? You don't say that no more? Get the step and they say that? I know this ain't going out of style. Just leave. We say amen. <laughs> I just left. So, God, those of us in the church, the experiences that we have, he's building our faith. And sometimes it may take a long time for what we ask God for. Don't cast away your confidence. Can we say amen? You're going to be rewarded for that. Don't throw that away. It's going to be rewarded. If I see a penny, I pick it up. I ain't too proud to pick up them brown boys. Amen. Is everybody brown getting discriminated against, even the penny? We just walk by and see the, when we look at the shiny nickel, we pick the nickel up. We won't pick up the penny. Pick a, you know. I pick it up because all money to me is valuable. Because you can't have a dollar without a penny. Is that right? Because how many pennies make up a dollar? How many? I had 3,000 pennies one time. I said it'll never happen again. It's nice to have a penny, piggy bank and you put your coins in there It's until you got to count it. I just take mine to the bank and, and throw it in the machine. and it does, Yeah, but you're paying $5 for that. See, when you become a pastor, you learn to be economical. Some folk like to call it stingy. It's not stingy or tightwad. Tightwads don't help nobody. Can we say amen? You know, so I'm not a tightwad. I'm not stingy like to be economical. So as we close, your faith, what you know and what you believe about God, that's why the devil attacks it so much because it's so valuable. He understands the value of our faith. He understands it. That's why he always attacks it. That's why he always comes and challenges us to see if we really believe God like we said we do. All of our trials is based upon what we believe about God, our faith. And I was going to preach a sermon uh, stripped down to my faith. Talk about David and Goliath. I thought about that this morning. David and Goliath. Goliath was a nine-foot-tall giant. Had six fingers on every hand, on both hands, and uh, six toes on every foot. And he was a champion warrior. And here comes little old scrawny red-headed David. And he went up before that giant and all of Israel was all afraid. Even the king, Saul, was scared. And Goliath came up every day trying to find a challenger from Israel that would challenge him. He said, if you find somebody that will beat me, take me down, then we will no longer oppress the nation of Israel. And he came up day by day. And here comes David, little old scrawny red-headed David. And when he got there, he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that has defied the armies of God? And so he decided to go up against him. He didn't have no armor. He didn't have no shield. He didn't have no sword. 
he was stripped down to his faith. It was his faith in God. It wasn't the stones that killed Goliath. It was David's faith in God. And when they say, what makes you think that you can go stand up against Goliath? And what did he do? He looked back in his experiences with God. Can we say amen? He said, I was tending sheep, and a lion came out, and I slew the lion. Then the time a bear came out, and I slew the bear. Amen. So this Philistine, so many words, is nothing. So the boy walked out there. I think he was only 17 years old. Walked out there. But what made the difference? It wasn't by strength. It wasn't by his stature. It was by his faith. Faith that can slay a giant. And we all know the story. Can we say amen? Slew that giant. The giant was so big and David was so small, he climbed, the Bible says he climbed on top of the giant, took his sword and cut his head off. <laughs> and the king got mad because he was jealous. But that's what faith in God can do. Don't worry about being disappointed. You won't be disappointed. Can we say amen? <laughs> Sometimes unbelief say, well, uh, if you put on, what if you disappoint it? What if he comes through? <laughs> he has a track record of what? Coming through. So whatever we face, God is able. And he stands with us. For those of y'all that are not saved, if you want the Holy Ghost, if you want your life changed, your life can be changed today. All you have to do is put your faith in God. All of us have faith in something. When you sat on these pews, you didn't check the legs of these pews to see whether they would be able to hold you up. Thanks for watching Life for Living with Pastor Raider Johnson.